We specialize in, uh, in Chinese uh, tea. We're as much interested in, in research uh, as we are in tea. In the tea industry, there just isn't any access to information about tea. You don't know, uh, don't know where it comes from or who made it. Uh, it's all very opaque. And uh, one of the things that I, I was particularly moved by in the beginning was the tea makers. The tea makers in China, they dedicated their life to a, a making better and better tea every year. And uh, we wanted to promote the people that were making our tea rather than keeping them secret. We also want to our customers have a connection with those tea masters. So we had the same idea, want to promote high-end tea to the world. Even in China, high-end tea is still very rare. I have to travel to different regions to see the different tea master or different group of people, how they making the tea. The Seven Cups is really a, a unique shop uh, to do its, its um, business and its direct trade sort of model. This is something that Austin and Juping started just because they really didn't know any other way. This is before there was a word for direct trade. I got the interest in the early 90s. I made a friend who was um, uh, a graduate student at the U of A. Was, uh, he was from China and he gave me some really, um, I guess, average uh, Chinese green tea, which I thought was spectacular. And, uh, and then I was drawn to the question of why wasn't I able to buy it in the United States, considering that I could go to the Tucson Mall and not find anything made in America. So I was interested in that problem. Austin it was one of the early foreigners to show up to China and, and start buying tea. And uh, so suddenly to have this six foot tall uh, white American guy showing up asking, saying, hey, I hear you make the best tea. Can you sell me the best tea? Um, uh, was uh, something that made an impression. I met Zhu Ping after I, after I started my business. She was uh, managing the tea house in, in Guangzhou. I did some business with her employers and you know, kind of things evolved. And she came over to uh, visit. And she came over to, you know, sit in on the trade show that I was doing in, uh, in Anaheim. And uh, uh, she just stayed. <laughs> so this That's year for great. the Oolong tea, we vote. This is our best. For uh, Zhu Ping in particular, um, her role in the industry really is, has been on the Chinese side. And, into the uh, the relationships with producers and different governing organizations of the Chinese industry. So we try our best to make the tea house very soothing, very calming, with setting as a traditional way, which is with lots of arts. I also demo the tea, how to make the tea or doing the tea ceremony for many of my customers. So those kind of influence, little by little, make them feel the tea house is a very unique place for them. Here at the tea house, the atmosphere when there was no pandemic was beautiful. And it, it's still a beautiful space, but to feel all of the people in here drinking tea You'd be sitting at the table and someone would come by and ask for your order and explain. If you, if you couldn't choose a tea, they would explain the benefits of different teas or how they would taste. So few people in the country who are willing to put expensive, very high quality teas out there with the respect for their customer and say, they're going to get it. They're going to understand this. And not only are they going to do this, but they're gonna do it in Tucson, Arizona. And yeah, it's not, not San Francisco, not New York. Why tea in Tucson? 
Now, it, it, it really doesn't make too, too much sense to uh, sell a hot beverage in a, in a place that's the temperature is over 100 degrees six months of the year and half, half the year, half the population leaves and tourists stop coming. So why, why even do tea in t Tucson? Well, first of all, it's because where I live. And, you, you know, it does, intuitively, it doesn't make much sense unless you understand Southwestern people. Southwestern people are, uh, let's just say, thirsty for culture. And, uh, and what, what we provide is not just tea, but we, we provide a, a cultural experience for people. I felt very sad for the pandemic time. Everybody have a hard time. And my tea house was so many customers, they called home. They missed the tea house. I missed them. Wow. The pandemic had a pretty, pretty, you know, uh, gave us quite a gut punch. So we had to close down for service. However, we've, we've kept going because our, uh, our, our shop is still open and uh, because a lot of local people have bought tea from us online. So even though we don't get to see the community and, and uh, face to face, they're, they're still supporting our business and uh, uh, you know, we'll be in business next year.